Ah, it's finally here, my friends. This is a used Tamiya King Hauler. You guys may recognize this body as the one of uh, HD Overkill, as well as uh, the Optimus Overkill body I just had painted by Airbrusher Ryan from Bloodshot Airbrushing. This is something that I actually purchased on eBay. I paid a ludicrous amount of money for, uh, but once I saw it, I had to have it. <clears throat> and I know it's got some upgrades already. I know I paid way too much for it, but it is gorgeous. I love it. You can see, look at the reflection of my hands. <laughs> the only problem with this truck is trying to film it without you guys seeing the camera, which I think is going to be impossible because of this beautiful mirror finish. Uh, this finish is actually the limited edition uh, chrome kit that uh, Tamaya had. I think you can still find them in different areas. In fact, at right now at the time of this filming, the guy that actually built this truck uh, has another one fairly similar to it available on eBay as well. Uh, this does have a six inch extension added to the frame rails. I will be getting uh, just full long um, proper frame rails, just one piece, but for the time being, just to get this in the studio it's amazing in person it's much nicer to see uh, than it was even in the photos here let me turn this all the way around for you kabloom now inside is the uh, Tamiya multifunction kit or multifunction uh, unit here it is uh, control unit. They call it the MFU or the MFCU. Uh, this has sound and lights and uh, a coupler unit, right? So you can uh, attach and um, remove a trailer uh, via remote control. But this one doesn't have the servo set up for that option. It just has the servo arm. Now I'm going to go and replace a lot of these uh, servos that are inside. One for shifting the three-speed transmission, uh, as well as one for steering. This is going to have a heck of a steering radius because it is so long. Uh, but you know, I'm excited. I you know the headache rack on here. This is a uh, hardened aluminum. Uh, it's put on by a clamp here and here. I just got to tighten this one up. Uh, also, these aluminum stacks right here, I know everyone recognizes these from uh, HD Overkill. Hold on, I've undone the whole cab so we can have a look inside. Uh, but these are different than the ones I had on Overkill. These ones have a big slice down here where I was running a smoker kit. Now the smoker kit uh, won't be able to fit into something like this because of the multifunction control unit on the inside. Great bush bumper on that, hey? Now I do want to have a look inside uh, and one of the things for folks that aren't familiar with these type of trucks uh, is behind the headache rack here there is a little system where you can remove the back wall. Ba -bom. See this actually has a two uh, tab right there so it just moves in and out locking it into place. Now with that removed I could access the battery and everything in there uh, but in preparation uh, for this whole thing to arrive because I, I'm usually planning things a few months in advance for uh, for the show and what's going to appear here on the stage uh, I did uh, have some tanks uh, for Optimus Overkill uh, those aluminum tanks that I had I want to use them on this but I also purchased two more because this actually has four tanks on here. So I may have to purchase more for Optimus Overkill. I'm still waiting for parts on that one. Hold on, crossing the view. Having a look for this tank right here. Ta-da! This tank I actually got on eBay as well. You guys have seen this before. Some of you uh, know exactly what I'm talking about because this is actually an empty cylinder. Right, everybody wanted me to use this for a smoker kit draw point, but it doesn't kind of work like that. Uh, so this is all alum aluminum. I have four of them, and I figured uh, instead of just unboxing this beauty today, uh, I figured I'd try and put these tanks on and actually replace them just to see, you know, kind of spice up the show a little bit for you guys. Let me see here if I can even get this off properly. Come on. Now something's holding it down. I want to be very careful as it lights. Get this one out. There we go. Ta-da! So there's all the lights on the inside of the MFU. Here, I'll cross in front of the camera. Just going to put this chrome kit on its side carefully because all the lights have been already attached. 
You see the kit is brand new, the speaker on the inside, it's got a stock Tamiya motor on the inside brushed. Very inexpensive uh, servos, you know, the upgrade will have to happen on this. I'd like to see some waterproof servos in here, not to make this waterproof, but just when we're rolling through or splashing uh, some water on the road, you know, it doesn't burn out the servos midway through the photo shoot or whatever we're doing. So this, I just have to uninstall, screw, screw, or right there, and there's gonna be two more under here. All right, so I've already used my Phillips screwdriver to go ahead and remove all four screws holding this in, top and bottom. This is plastic, uh, chrome, of course, pretty. You can see the red light from the camera. Uh, I will, there's camera right there, hello. Hey, that means I'm over, hey, hey. <laughs> uh, there you go, so this is off to the side. I can use that for another semi build if I want. This one is much heavier, hey? This being aluminum actually is, uh, you know, probably twice as heavy. So simple to switch stuff in and out of these kits, especially when you're able to work on them, uh, you know, even just for a few minutes, you can switch out tanks like this. You just have to buy them or source them out or build them if you guys have the ability. I certainly don't have a garage full of tools in my house yet, but being a new dad, I'm sure that will come soon enough. <laughs> All right, now to get at this tank and on the other side, I have to remove this whole bottom plate but I've already done uh, the screws that are on all four corners. Simply lift it back. Well, that's what I'm doing at least, being careful all this rat's nest of uh, wiring. He did a really good job though. The builder did a good job uh, keeping this whole trunk of wires kept together down the side. And overall with a little bit of uh, uh, wire or um, split loom, it'll certainly come together and look much more tidy. And here's one. Here's the other one, and come wrapped up from eBay, here is the other one. These aluminum tanks are uh, definitely uh, higher end, they're fairly expensive. I think uh, each tank cost me about 70 bucks each, because they're machined and put together. Um, rah, trying to figure out here. There, at least you guys get an idea of what it looks like. I found the aluminum stuff by going on eBay and searching uh, Tamiya King Hauler. And then it gives you a whole bunch of different options. So uh, make sure it's on the right way. Everything's all screwed in tight. I always double check it though, right? You don't want to get down the road and see one of your tanks rolling away. Yeah, they could have used a little bit of a turn. Look at that. Not a big deal though. Kind of expected it. That's why I did it. Just kind of tightening stuff up before I put it on the truck. How many times have you figured, oh, I'll just do it later, and then you get there and everything falls apart, and you think, damn, I should have done it then. <laughs> okay, this tank, that tank, move this tank out of the way. Get ready to install this one. All right, so I was gonna show you them completed, but as soon as I went to do the next step, I realized that the chassis uh, extensions that he's bolted in, he had to actually add two screws further on the inside, which means these aluminum braces actually don't fit anymore. Look at this. On the plastic one, he was able to dremel out one side to make these fit. So in the same kind of spirit, I should be able to dremel out uh, this one the same way. Just need some safety glasses and my Dremel, of course. Uh, I do have a reinforced Dremel disc. Glasses on. This is certainly a good cutting tool for me on aluminum. It will cut right into what I need just to line it up for these holes right here. So, bum bum bum. Here, give me a moment. I'll show you what I mean. I already started on one right there. I could. Uh, just drill two more holes uh, here and here in the frame, but at the same time, I don't want to, you know, start weakening it even more. Uh-huh. 
all put back together again. Now, you must be wondering why they don't look any different. <laughs> it's because they're only aluminum. Uh, why did I even do an upgrade like this? Well, partly because I already had uh, two of the parts. Uh, I just had to get another set of them. I, I ordered them in preparation for today. And you know what? All tricked out in aluminum, I don't mind because this is a fairly special kind of shelf queen. You know, uh, and a shelf queen for those that are noobs that don't know what it is just means something that usually just sits there looking pretty. Now, that's definitely what this truck is all about. Now, I'll tell you, it's the most basic uh, re uh, receiver transmitter uh, setup that I would normally use. I'd like to see more options and channels on this to control what's going on in here. But, you know, it's certainly good for basic needs. Now, let's turn this truck on. Uh, battery is already turned on. It's already plugged in in there as well. On, starting process, <laughs> all right, you can hear it clicking away, hey? Now it does have a shaker, here I'll turn it down, the volume knob, you can hear it shaking. Yeah, it's just rumbling back and forth, that multi uh, multi-function control unit on the inside has a shaker unit to it. Now, I'm still learning about the MFU. This is my very first time uh, even checking it out on a running machine, other than on uh, Crawler Ted's Tamiya Toyota Tundra, where it was already uh, all done up as well. Now, the volume is quite loud for the engine and sounds. That's only 25%. Well, maybe a third. Check it out. Three-stage transmission on this puppy. I want to show you the lights. Turning. All right. That's pretty easy. Let's turn on some lights. Hold on. Let me jump around the camera. Ugh. Hazard lights. Hazard lights there. And, of course, flashing in the back. Turn off the blinkers. There you go. How about that? Nice lights down in front. There we are. The whole thing is shaking. Pretty cool. Turn them off. Now there's lots of different settings. I still have to explore them. You can set them, see? Different lights right there. That's the top. And of course the hazards. So I'll go through and figure this out. There's different settings. There it is shutting down. Cool, hey, I just did a switch on the side. So we'll turn it back up to running. Start it up. Very cool. There's quite a few things. I wanna change these out. These nice chrome ones, we'll put in some aluminum ones. Only because I have an extra set here anyway. What do you think? You like the looks of this? Now, uh, shifting transmission. It's as simple as going left and right right here. And then if you wanted to back up. Oh, pardon me. Forward. Very nice. Here's the horn. I believe, short one and a long one. <laughs> Shift properly, backwards, backup lights come on, forwards. Man, I can hardly wait to get the trailer here. Too much fun. I have to figure out this shifting properly though. Center turns off the backup meter. Very cool. Back to the controls for me. Here's another switch. I notice top or bottom just kind of gives it a shutdown. Here, turn it on.
<laughs> I know, I want to go play as well. Here, shut her down. That's a good looking rig. Uh, okay guys, uh, it's still tons of snow outside. I want to take it outside and play, but I can't. Uh, it's just going to have to sit here and look pretty for the time being, but it certainly does do that uh, until it warms up. If you guys want to check out more on this truck, uh, I'll, I'll be doing updates, of course, on my Facebook uh, account, of course. Like I said, it linked down below. Uh, you can always check out new stuff that's coming up in my show on my Facebook. That's all my Facebook people get to know a little bit sooner in advance. And of course, if you want to check it out, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. See you guys on the next RC adventure. Thanks for tuning in.